Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. This is going to be part three of the Calaro Changer. And today what we're going to focus on is getting a new cartridge in the arm. This one is dead. It doesn't put out much of anything at all. It should be putting out somewhere around half a volt. So the, you can see that the constraint is that the width of the arm is very narrow. And we need to be able to fit something in here that works. And so what I'm going to do is take these two screws loose so that the whole bracket drops out of the arm. And you can see what we're working with. So here's what it, you look at when you get this out of the arm. This is the ElectroVoice cartridge. It's the original cartridge. And uh, this has no output. Also, the bridge has gotten very stiff. That's not uncommon at all. So we need to find a way to outfit a new cartridge to this. And the difficulty is, of course, is that everything's riveted together, and we also have to maintain that angle. So, let me show you what I typically do with these things. So, as you can see, this is comprised of a bracket and another bracket, which holds the cartridge on at a certain angle uh, to maintain vertical tracking angle while you're having either a single or a stack of records. As you can see, when it sits flat, it's maybe about, oh, I don't know, 15 degrees, if that. So what you need to do is mount a new cartridge to there. And because of the lack of width of the arm, more or less you're stuck with two options. You can either do the, <coughs> excuse me, the Banpa 2T, which is basically a flip over version of the infamous Crosley uh, Shui Dencho cartridge or the Shui Dencho cartridge itself. And you can see here that doing a side-by-side -side comparison with wise it's pretty close to the width of the original cartridge. Uh, the only downfall of the Chewy Dencho is that um, if you want to do a 78 record, you're going to have to switch needles versus the Banpa 2T, which you can literally just flip the needle over. So, uh, what we have to do is get this mounted onto here. And as you can see, there's a difficulty because the depth of the cartridge is much greater. And we also have to contend with this original bracket here. This was originally a flip over cartridge, although this one's pretty sticky. You can see that I can try to, holding the camera steady, Arrgh. not as easy as it looks to flip this one over, but it does flip over. It's two cartridges, and one is 78, and one whatever. It's EV Electro Voice number 26 cartridge, I think. Anyway, enough shakes. So let me show you how I kind of do this. The first task is to get the old cartridge out. And the way that you do this is there's a clip here at the front. You can kind of see this metal clip here. Uh, let me get some better light on it. There we go. You need to grab this and pull it forward while you're prying from underneath to pry this up and off the bracket. Easier said than done, I know. So I'm gonna try to show you what I mean here. You basically pull forward on the edges of this bracket and have something underneath to pry it out, which requires that I have two hands. So let me just do that and show you what it's like with the cartridge out. All right, so that's what it looks like with the cartridge out. So now we've got the leftover bracket here, which would have supported this. And as you can see, the problem with this in there lies is that the new cartridge is far too deep to be accepted by the original bracket. So there's two ways to approach this. Uh, and it really depends on if you want to maintain the absolute vector of the original cartridge or not. You can either take a plastic mount uh, <coughs> from like a Varco TN4, TN6, TN8, or one of the plastic mounts that come with one of these, which you may have to find separately, and shear this, rivet off, take the old bracket out, and then trim down and glue the bracket for the Chudenshi to this. Uh, problem with shaving that rivet off is now you're going to have to glue the weight down for this bracket. So that kind of sucks. 
another way you can do it is, is you can literally cut this bracket at the back off and these two little ears here, or in fact you might actually keep them as a way to support the cartridge angle. Uh, typically in the past I've cut this off and then made a little post or something to keep the angle correct and uh, glue the cartridge to the bracket. That's another way to do it. If you're an awesome machinist, I suppose you can make a completely new bracket with a weight that would support the common cartridge, but I don't have those skills. So what I am going to do is I'm going to shave this bracket down, not completely, but enough to where the cartridge can rest on the front bracket, maintain the correct angle and stuff like that, and then glue it all down. So this is going to take me a bit, but out comes the Dremel tool. All right, so after a little trial and error, here's what I've done. As you can see, I shaved off the little tiny bracket that was the curved bracket with the little pilot hole that the original cartridge spun on. Back up a little bit there. I shaved off the, bracket, the back end of the bracket, and I also measured and cut the back end of this so that it would fit inside of the little groove that's in the cartridge body here. And so what I've been able to do is, is with that, I can abut the cartridge into that space and then I can fit it so that it fits nicely in the little bracket here so that I maintain the angle well enough so that this will work. And so the only thing left to do is apply some epoxy in here at the attachment points so that this will stay put and the cartridge won't break away. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll worry about wiring the cartridge up with some uh, modern push-ons and hopefully this will get mounted up and work correctly in the uh, in the new location and as we can see if we look at the attachment angle here if it's flat mounted to the uh, arm we still get about our 15 degree protrusion downward so it didn't turn out too bad that's typically how I make that work so I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce this with some epoxy and then uh, I'll show you what I do to wire it up. Now before I epoxy this, just as a note, you're going to have limited spots of attachment. The two little nubs up here, you're going to rough up a little bit and epoxy that. But really, the main point of attachment is going to be in that little crevice there that's going to fit over the metal piece that I trimmed down to fit. And that's where your main point of attachment is going to be. You want to use a nice, strong 5-minute epoxy. You might even want to use JB Weld. But just remember, don't get any epoxy inside of the hole here where the clip for the stylus goes. And also, if anything gets in there, it'll gum up your reeds, and then this won't work. So you have to be sparing at the front with the epoxy and very generous at the back in the little crevice here where it's going to attach to the metal bracket that I've machined down. So, just a little point of uh, interest there. Pay attention to that, otherwise you'll end up having to do this all over again. Right. So here's our finished product. And as you can see, I've got the epoxy underneath there holding it on both sides. I get a little tiny dab of it up in here to keep that stable. Got a nice protrusion angle, works well. So now all we got to do is wire it up. And that's where things require soldering and the like, because as you can see, the original cartridge used these little tiny flat things and these little flat connectors, which are different than the cylindrical type, which everybody else uses now. So what you have to do is, is obtain some of those. Now I have them sitting around everywhere because I harvest them off of dead turntables and things. But uh, you can talk to Gary at the Voice of Music and see if he has some push-ons to sell you.
So let's go ahead and uh, get a bunch of those and wire this thing up if we can. Now because we're using a three wire system with a red, uh, yeah, excuse me, a, a right hot, a left hot, and one single ground, what you have to do on these is attach the two grounds together on the cartridge and then solder it in. So let me show you how I do that. So as you can see we take our two negatives put them back to back like this and then I'm going to squeeze them together apply some solder and then attach the ground wire that's floating there that you can see. So now you can see that I got the two unified and I got the ground wire soldered through there. Ground wire that goes back to the chassis of course attaches there at the back. That's the big fat one. We'll leave that alone. So all that's left to do now is get the turntable and attach the new left and right hot leads to the old ones. And then we can go about putting it back in the arm. Now usually this is what you'll see. There's the big fat ground lead that goes at the back and our left and right which are clearly color coded. The red's the right, the black's the left. There's a little bit of rubber on there you'll probably need to cut off so that you can expose the solder side and get those connectors unsoldered. So I'm going to cut the rubber away, unsolder the old ones, and put the new ones on there. Alright, so after a little bit of frustration, I got the new connectors soldered on there. Left the old ground one alone. And so all I need to do now is attach these connectors. Our left and right here on the top side and the ground here. And we can get this mounted back up into the tone arm using the original hardware. Sorry for the jitters, I'm just holding the camera here, no stand today. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, get them attached. And here they are all attached. There's your ground at the back, here's your left and right. And if you're curious, the cartridge does in fact if it'll focus here. It is labeled somewhere on here left and right. Can't get it to focus well enough for you to see it though, but it is in fact labeled, so if you're curious, uh, you don't have to worry about messing that up. So let me get the two screws and we'll mount it back up in the arm and see how it looks. Alright, so there it is. Mounted up in the arm. And I don't know if you can see it from the side, but it's got a uh, pretty good protrusion angle. It's tracking at about maybe three, three and a half grams, about what I want. Let's put the platter on it and see how it sits on a record. So there's how it sits on the record. Pretty good angle. And if we had about maybe three or four more albums on that, it'd be all right. Now here's one issue that we're running into is that this dust brush here has gotten really stiff. It'll almost support the arm on its own. So that really isn't going to be practical to keep. I suppose it'd work all right once everything's set down okay. But if yours is too stiff to the point where it won't track correctly, you may have to get rid of that brush. We'll see how this pans out. So far, the uh, protrusion angle looks good, vertical tracking angle looks good. It's uh, sitting pretty on there. So, in the next episode, we'll get this uh, fitted, because I know there's some wiring issues with this coax here we need to fix in the muting switch. But uh, that's how you get a cartridge mounted up in one of these things. And uh, we'll be able to listen to it, and you'll be able to see, uh, after we correct the other issues, how it sounds. And maybe even we'll get it back in its console and listen to it then. But for now, that's how to get a cartridge mounted in one of these late 50s Calaro changers. I hope you guys found this portion of the video interesting, and maybe in the next episode we'll actually get to hear it. So thanks for watching, more stuff to come soon.